You sometimes hear me joke about being a recovering congressman. Well, there's another guy on TV who could lay claim to that same uh, distinction. Joe Scarborough, who's on MSNBC, along with his co-host for Morning Joe, Mika Brzezinski. Uh, they were in West Palm Beach, Florida recently. We talked everything from TV to politics, and there was unanimous agreement. Getting up early in the morning is kind of tough. The, the morning is a challenge. And I mean, we're not on as early as you, but I'm up at four. Uh, right. So how do you guys reconcile to that schedule? What time do you get up, Joe? I get up at four now. Mika gets up at 3.30 or 4. I think we all get up around the same time. And as you know, it's tough to do it. But once you get up, you sort of charge ahead, but you never really get used to it. It's Ever. And, and for my kids, poor Jack, I mean, I've got kids... Got about 47 kids, uh, and and sure. my oldest is 26, and my youngest is six, and my poor six-year-old daddy comes home, and collapses. I get halfway through Iron Man, and boom, I collapse. <laughs> but as you know, I mean, it's it's great charging full steam ahead, but usually by eight eight thirty nine, it's time to say yeah. good night. It's hard. It's a long day. Well, so how do you, how do you do it? Well, I'm getting older, man, so I go to sleep like at 7.30. Yeah, you know, that, I mean, I just, that helps. Just uh, watch a little tip, boom, yeah. out Nice. As, as the time passes. But, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's a very interesting thing to watch what happens, not only in television, but in real life. I, I don't know how we would describe the medium. I guess, in a sense, we hold up a mirror mm -hmm. to what happens. And, and, and people talk about everyday life and the give and take of... Uh, contentious issues and relationships. A few months back, there was a big thing. Joe does an on-air apology to Mika. Um, yeah. Which what, one was that? I, I, I've, apologized, <laughs> I've apologized a lot for, but you know, here's the thing, JD. We don't have teleprompters. We sort of sketch out uh, a general idea of where we go, but we go on, the cameras turn on at six, they turn off at nine, and we, we just go. And the show works because it's like sitting around the table and sometimes I say things that make sense, sometimes I don't, sometimes I go over the line, sometimes I have to and apologize to Mika. You know, it, we're very transparent about how we're feeling at any moment. I mean, I often joke about, you know, I think I, you know, took my Ambien too late last night or whatever, because sometimes, you know, I'm a little fuzzy in the morning or whatever, and I literally talk about everything that goes on in my life. And if we're feeling a certain way, or if we're getting stressed out about an issue, or if things are getting contentious on the set, the viewer will see it. And once in a while, we need to kind of check, do a gut check on it. Yeah. And we'll do that live too. And JD, <laughs> you understand this better than anybody that interviews us, because we've both been on the political side, we've both been on the TV side. In politics like TV, if people know that you're just shooting straight, sometimes you mess up, they're much more willing to apologize. One time, I said a very bad word on the air. Oh, that was terrible. And it was awful. He, and he I was, the I'm sure, I'm sure, I, was, I thought he was, I was just wishing someone good luck. Good no. luck. No, but so, no. so I was quoting was so tired. Rahm Emanuel, and I thought, I was so tired, I thought I said, quote, the F word. But I actually said the word, it was like it's 6.03, and everybody just froze on the set. I said, what, 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 what? what's what? wrong, what's wrong, what, what? <laughs> and the second I figured it out, you know, my cell phone went off and all my friends were saying, and I was like, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. You know, I just right there said, hey, I apologize, this is what happened. You lay down yeah. straight. And he again, didn't even hear himself. But again, it's just you know, like how many examples do you have in politics where maybe you said something you shouldn't have said or you did? We all do that. But they, if they trust you, then it's okay, right? Well, it's a it's a very interesting. I, I, for me, it's back to the future because yeah. this is what I did before, before I before I went to Congress, and now thankfully afterwards. But for you, you had a career in the law, right. and then it was Congress, and now national television. How's it, which one is harder for you? Politics or, or, or TV? They're both very different. The funny thing for me was when my friends in broadcasting would come see us on Capitol Hill, I'd go, 
you know, I'm sure glad I'm not there anymore because yeah. there you are on the whims of an executive or what the oh, ratings are. Oh, yeah. And at least in politics, you got a set term and exactly. then you go win or lose an election. Now yeah. I'm going, man, am I happy to be back in television because I don't have to go out and raise money and I don't have to yeah. worry so much about the game of gotcha, even though this is a public career. Right. And Mika, I'm interested in, in your um, life experience, uh, being Dr. Brzezinski's daughter and the role he played in the Carter administration and just you getting into television. I got the bug uh, by going with my father when he was interviewed on Nightline. I would go with him to ABC and sit and watch Ted Koppel interview him. One night it was Geraldo filling in for Ted. Oh, I dear found Lord. that fascinating. Um, Larry King, you know, all these shows, and I would watch how they sometimes packaged the message of what he said when they couldn't use the entire interview, and I found the whole thing fascinating. And I knew when I was 14 years old, I wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. Brother Joe, there was talk. You, you went up to New Hampshire and spoke at a breakfast it was, a couple of they, months ago. That was fun. And there was some speculation that hmm, you might look at public office again, a little yeah. something called the presidency. Yeah, I don't think so. I, we, we enjoy what we're doing. So. Yeah. Uh, and I probably would take another step first. But I don't know. I, you know, I think about getting back into public office uh, on some of my more insane days. Um, I might do it, might not. I, I, I actually really enjoyed Washington. People come up and ask me uh, if I enjoyed it or not. And they're always surprised when I said, yeah, it was like one of the greatest jobs I've ever had. I, other than coaching high school football, uh, you know, and Morning Joe, it was my favorite job. I loved it. It was a great honor to do it. And I know you know how it feels. I mean, that, that and honor. And you never lose that joy for it. Yeah. So I think he always thinks about it. I'm, I'm absolutely positive he's always thinking about it. But I think the thing that he always has to cope with is the platform that he has with this show and the ability to be a part of the conversation and set the agenda. Um, that would be something you have to walk away from to run for office. Almost. And as you yeah. know, running for office is yeah. not that fun all the time. Not fun. Do you ever think about it? Well, I think we all have a certain phrase that we respond with, yeah. which is never say never. Exactly. Yeah. Mika, were his name on the ballot, would you vote for this man? Absolutely. That's easy. Yes. Well, pretty interesting there. Mika, uh, a Democrat, uh, cast her vote for Joe if he runs as a Republican. That's bipartisanship, huh? My thanks to Joe Scarborough and Mika Brzezinski. We're going to step aside now for this Newsmax Now update.